，欢迎各位同学收看今天的课程。今天我们要讲的是第九章，第九章的主题呢是要叙述一个故事，就是 narrative story。那我们今天很高兴的邀请到 Taylor 老师。Hello everyone, I'm Taylor。而且高兴的邀请到了两位同学，一位是 Tiffany 同学。Hello, I'm Tiffany。还有一位是 Laura 同学。Hi, I'm Laura。And in the last unit, we practiced descriptive writing, which will help us in this next unit, where we'll, where we'll be focusing on narrative writing, specifically on narrative stories that have affected our lives. 那在上一个单元中呢，我们练习的这个 descriptive writing 就是描述性的写作。那在这一个单元中呢，帮助我们。那我们这个单元呢，是要专注于 narrative writing， 就是叙述的写作。那特别是影响到我们生活的故事的这种叙述故事。First, what is a narrative? Well, most of us have stories from our lives which we love telling. They remind us of things that may make us laugh or have deeply affected us. A narrative story gives us the chance to retell this story to the world. 首先，我们要知道的是什么叫做叙事，就是 narrative。那我们大多数人都有自己喜欢讲述的一个生活故事，那我们会让我们发笑，也会让我们影响我们的人生。那这些故事呢，我们都很想让全世界知道。那现在我们就要学习怎么样写这个故事。Like essays, narratives have an introduction, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. It is important to hook the reader and let them know what to expect in the rest of the story, with a conclusion giving it a final wrap up. 那就像 A C A C 就是散文一样，就像在写散文一样，叙事呢也是要有引言、有正文，还有一个结论。那重要的是要吸引读者，让他们能够期待故事剩余的部分。那最后呢，我们要给一个结论，然后为读者提供最后的总结。When thinking of a topic for a narrative, come up with events that took place in a short period of time. Such as arriving late to the airport or a bad date, stories that happened over several days might be better suited for memoir, novellas, or even novels. 那我们要考虑叙述文它这样的主题的时候，你要考虑的是在短时间内发生的事情。例如说啦，你到机场的时候迟到了，或者在一个糟糕的约会里面。那比较长的这些事呢，比如说发生好几天的这种事呢，可能比较适合写的是回忆录，像 memoir 就回忆录，或者是写在 novella， 这叫中篇小说，或者是写在 novels 里面，这叫长篇小说。We will now take a look at the very first paragraph of our narrative writing model. Please read along in the book. I will never forget that final moment ascending to the top of Hong Kong's Victoria Peak. To salvage a disappointing vacation, my girlfriend and I had gone to Hong Kong over a four-day weekend to see the sights, eat delicious food, and relax. Instead, we were plagued with four days of non-stop rain and food poisoning that kept us inside most of the time. Not wanting to leave Hong Kong empty-handed, we decided on one last-ditch effort to see an amazing view. This narrative in our writing model takes place during a one-hour trip up to a viewpoint. It was narrowed down from a trip to Hong Kong, as we saw in earlier chapters, to just the terrible parts of that trip, and down further to this particular event. 那我们这个写作范例呢，是写到一个香港的旅游。作者呢，他写作的时候呢，是先写一个香港的旅游，然后缩小了他的论点，再到旅游中比较糟糕的部分。然后最后呢，再写到这个特别的事件，这个特别的事件就是一个小时的这种攀登香港的太平山，观赏维多利亚港的这个小小的事件，这是他最后的高潮。Your topic should be something that you feel strongly about, whether it has a positive or negative connotation tied to it. This is what helps build the beginnings of a narrative. It needs to be clear to the reader. What the topic is and how you feel about it. This is called a comment. Your 主题呢应该是要任何你有强烈感受的东西，不管你是有正面的感受还是有负面的感受，那这个会帮助你写一个叙述文的开始。那这需要呢让读者清楚你的主题是什么，还有你的感受是什么。我们称它为评论。For example, 
hiking up Jade Mountain was one of the most difficult and amazing experiences of my life. What is the topic of this here? Tiffany? 举例而言呢，登上玉山呢，是我人生中最困难而且最惊奇的经验之一。那这句话里面，请问一下Tiffany同学，我们的主题是什么呢？ 主题应该是hiking up Jade Mountain。那主题就是徒步登上玉山。Correct. And how does the author feel about this experience? 那作者对这个有什么感觉呢？ Um, it was amazing but difficult. 作者觉得这个很棒，但是很困难。Exactly. And this feeling is the controlling idea, and everything in the narrative should relate back to one or both of these ideas. Laura, read the first sentence of our model writing. 是的,这个篇里面的这个控制概念,就是我们的叙述文中,所有的内容都应该跟这个有关系。比如说你要跟什么有关呢? 跟hiking up Jade Mountain有关,或者是跟difficult and amazing有关,一定要跟这两个东西的其中一个有关系的。然后Laura同学,请朗读一下我们的下一个范例 I'll never forget the final moment ascending to the top of Hong Kong's Victoria Peak to salvage a disappointing vacation 这句是说我永远不会忘记因为登上香港太平山顶的最后时刻挽救了令人失望的假期And what is the topic of this narrative? 所以这篇里面它的主题是什么呢? The topic is getting to the top of Victoria Peak. 它的主题是到达太平山山顶。Correct. And what's the author's feeling about it? 是的,那这个作者他的feeling是什么? 他的感觉是什么呢? He says, I'll never forget that moment. It's like he is saying unforgettable, which normally means something amazing and positive that has happened in their lives. 他说我永远不会忘记这一刻。那难忘这个字通常意味着生活中发生了令人惊奇和正面的事情。True, and normally the word unforgettable is a positive thing. But in the model writing, he doesn't necessarily mean it was a positive experience. 是的,通常我们在写作中呢,这个 unforgettable它是一个正面的感觉。可是呢,在我们这篇文章,它不一定是表示正面的。Let's move on to the introduction. Remember, the first sentence should hook the reader, so it should be as interesting as possible. If not, add a different idea to catch the reader's attention and lead to the topic. In the writing model, what does the writer use to hook the reader? 那在这篇写作中,请问一下作者他用了什么来吸引读者呢? Um, he says, to salvage a disappointing vacation. This gives a sense of urgency and a problem to stop the hook to hook the reader. 他说,挽救一个令人失望的假期。这给人有一种紧迫感,而且让读者觉得说,有一个问题需要被解决。Exactly. We've all had disappointing moments in our lives and desperately wanted to escape or rectify them. 是的,我们所有的人生活中呢,通常都会有这种令人失望的时刻,并且很迫切的希望能够逃脱或者是改正他们。After the topic is introduced, be sure to provide a few sentences of background information to give the reader context to understand what is taking place. How is this done in the model writing? 那在介绍了这个主题之后呢，请务必要提供一些背景讯息的句子，使读者能够了解正在发生的事情。那同学，请问一下，在这个范例中，作者怎么做到的呢？ He writes this in the sentence following the first. My girlfriend and I had go to Hong Kong over a four-day weekend to see the sights, eat delicious food, and relax. Instead, we were plagued for four days of non-stop rain and food poisoning that kept us inside most of the time. 他在第一句之后的句子中间写下了这一句。我和我的女朋友在一个为期四天的周末去了香港，去看风景，吃美味的食物，并放松身心。然而，我们饱受了四天不间断的降雨和食物中毒的困扰，所以我们大部分时间都
precisely. We now know who else is involved in the story, why they are in Hong Kong, what their expectations were before arriving in Hong Kong, and what made their vacation so disappointing. 是的,現在呢,我們已經知道這故事中呢,還有什麼人參與在這故事裡面。那他們為什麼會在香港?那到達了香港之前呢,他們期待的是什麼呢?以及使他們的這個假期失望的原因是什麼呢? Be careful not to give too much background information. Stick to what is relevant to the story. 那請注意哦,你不要提供過多的背景訊息,只要寫與故事有關的內容就好了。now we move on to the body paragraphs. Here we want to take the reader along to experience what we experienced. It is especially important in narratives to use descriptive words. The reader should feel what you felt, see what you saw, and hear what you heard. Let me give you an example and see if you can give me a more descriptive sentence. For example, swimming in the ocean felt good. Laura, can you make this a sentence more descriptive? 然後現在呢,我們給一個例子哦,看看是否可以給它有更描述性的句子。舉例來說,這個句子是在海洋中有用感覺很好。那Rora同學,請你幫我們把這個句子描寫成為更有描述性的感覺的句子。Okay, for example, the cool ocean water felt refreshing on my skin. 像是涼爽的海水使我的皮膚清爽。Very good. Tiffany, try this one. The airplane was late. Tiffany, 同学,可不可以试试这句话是飞机误点了。Okay, the airplane finally pulled up to the gate six hours late. 飞机在迟到了六个小时后,终于才到了登机口。Also very good. Laura, try this one sentence for our viewers. The restaurant was really good. 好, Laura 同学, 请试试这句话, 这句话, okay. The atmosphere at the restaurant was cozy and the food was cooked perfectly. 这句话可以写成, Very good. A much more better and vivid description. Now remember that the story must proceed chronologically. The reader must know what happened first second, third, and so on. An issue students often have is skipping a step. Let's look at an example. 很好,請記住,這個敘述文的寫作呢,必須要按照時間的順序,讀者必須要知道第一,第二,第三發生了什麼事,學生呢常常呢喜歡跳過某一個步驟,讓我們來看看下一個例子。My best friend and I flew to Korea for vacation. We took a taxi to our hotel to check in. The kimchi was amazing. What's missing in this sentence? 好, 首先我们先说一下, 这个因为是学生的作文, 所以通常会有一些文法错误, um, when did he get to a restaurant? They were in a taxi, then they were eating. 他们什么时候去餐厅的? 他们在搭了计程车, 然后他们就去吃饭了. Now, you're right. Somehow the writer left out the step of going to the hotel uh, and then to the restaurant. So he could have added, after checking in, we went to a restaurant. The kimchi was amazing. 是的,没错。这个作者忽略了第三个步骤,那事实上他可以加上这样的句子,就是说办了入住手续之后呢,我们去了一家餐厅,然后再写说这个泡菜很棒,这样听起来就比较正常一点了。Before we move on to the conclusion, you need to know that the climax of the story should be in the last body paragraph of the story. The story and the action should build up to something in the model writing, we know that the climax will most likely be when they reach the top of the peak to which they are traveling. 
那在写结论之前呢，我们需要知道的是。故事的 climax 就是它的高潮，应该出现在哪里呢？在这个内文段落的最后，我们在写故事的时候呢，一定要有个高潮。在范例中呢，我们知道高潮的最后，也就是他们到达这个峰顶的时候。Now that the reader has experienced what you have experienced, it's time to wrap up the story and leave the reader with some lasting ideas. What are the three possible ways to end a narrative? 那现在呢？既然读者呢已经经历了你所经历的一切事情，那现在呢应该到了这个写总结的时候啦。那我们要让读者呢有一个悬念。那同学们还记不记得呢？我们在写一个故事的结尾有哪三种方法可以写呢？嗯、um, ，First you can restate the original idea, and second mention a related thought such as what you have learned and how you have changed. And the last one is look to the future. 所以重述的方法有，嗯，第一个重述最初的想法，再来呢是提及相关的想法，例如你学到的知识或者你有什么改变。最后你也可以写展望未来。That's correct. And in our writing model, which of the three did the writer use? 讲得非常的好。那我们在这个写作范例中，请问一下作者在这三个中使用了哪一个呢？嗯、um,。The writer uses number two and number three. They show how they dealt with disappointment, and the final sentence shows how they are looking toward the future. 作者使用了第二个和第三点，他们展示他们如何处理失望，然后最后一句话展示他们对未来的展望。That's right. The writer talks about their next trip to the Hong Kong. 是这样的。那这个作者呢，最后呢，讨论了他们下一次的香港之行。Now that we have reached the conclusion of the narrative, we must discuss a few key points to remember when telling one, staying on topic, writing direct quotes, and a bit of grammar review. 那现在呢，我们已经完成了结论。以下要请大家记得：第一个，不要离题。然后我们呢，可以直接的引述别人的话，还有我们的文法要加以检视。Staying on topic is particularly difficult for students writing narratives. When telling a story, they often want to tell everything that happened. That is why a clear topic and comment about the topic is important to begin with. It helps writers know what to leave in and what to take out. Look at this example. 对于写叙述文的学生来说呢，不要离题呢是特别困难的。在讲故事的时候呢，通常呢，作为作者，我们都想要把这个故事里面大大小小的事情都写到里面去。这就是为什么呢？我们一定要有一个清晰的主题，还有对这个主题的论点。那这样子呢，可以帮助我们作为作者来决定说，哎，我们什么东西是要留下来的，什么句子呢是要把它删掉的。以下我们来看这个例子。Last summer, I had an absolutely amazing trip to Korea with my best friend. I love traveling, and I think it makes us much better people. You only live once. It is the motto my friend and I both live by. When we got to the airport, we hailed a taxi. 这呢是一篇简短的作文。我们来看一下这篇作文的翻译哦。去年的夏天呢，我和最好的朋友去了韩国。那绝对呢是一次了不起的旅行。我喜欢旅行。我认为呢，这使我们变得更好。你的人生呢，只有一次。那这个呢，是我和我的朋友共同的座右铭。当我们到达机场的时候呢，我们叫了计程车。这是这篇作文。What information could have been omitted? 同学们，你们觉得这篇作文里面哪些东西是应该要省略的信息呢？嗯、mm, ，Pretty much everything between the first sentence and the last. Traveling to Korea is the topic, and absolutely amazing is how they feel. 在第一个句子和最后一个句子之间，所有的内容都可以被删掉，因为前往韩国是主题。那么他们的感觉，这是一个很惊喜的旅途。I agree. Their philosophy about travel and their motto are not related to the topic or the feeling, nor do they give any background information. Now let's look at the original writing model. 没有错，这个作文里面他们的这个 philosophy 
就是他们的哲学 ，about travel， 关于旅行，就是他们的旅行哲学。还有什么呢 ？motto 是他们的座右铭，跟这个 topic 就是我们的主题呢，或是他 feeling， 或是作者个人的感觉都没有关系。而且呢，这些话呢也没有提供任何的背景讯息。那现在我们来看看这个范例。We got off the train and saw the last few flights of stairs ahead of us. We decided we needed a break. We saw a small eatery to grab some food, so we ate some delicious sandwiches. Then we decided to try the stairs. All along the way, signs were advertising the best 360-degree view of Hong Kong. Our legs felt like stones ascending the stairs, with the anticipated views being the only thing keeping us going. 好，我们先来翻译下面的。我们下了电车，看到前面的最后的几段楼梯。我们决定呢需要休息一下。我们看到一个小餐馆，于是呢我们就买了点食物来吃。因此呢我们吃了一些美味的三明治。然后我们决定开始爬楼梯。沿途的广告标志呢都在宣传香港最好的三百六十度全景。那我们的双脚呢像石头一样完全爬不动。唯一能够让我们继续的往前爬的动力呢就是脑子里想象着待会会看得见的美景。So, what could have been omitted? 那所以这个范例中呢，我们有什么应该要省略的呢 ？Um, everything about the break could have been removed because they are including every step of the trip when getting to the top is what the story is about. 有关休息的所有内容基本上都可以被删除，因为当到达顶峰才是故事的重点。Exactly. Although it, although it is true that they took a break, got some food, it is off topic and does not push the story forward. It can be left out, and the story still makes sense chronologically. 没错，尽管呢，他们确实休息了一会儿，而且呢，他们确实去了餐厅吃了一点东西，但是呢，这个已经离题了。他们呢不可能呢使这个故事呢继续前进。多讲了这些话，故事还是在原地没有前进。所以呢，我们可以把他们删除，并且呢删掉这些句子之后呢，并不会影响我们这个故事的前后的顺序。Now we need to discuss direct quotes. This shows the reader that people are talking, and we can read their exact words. In addition to descriptive words, direct quotes make the action come more alive. Direct quotes are found between two quotation marks, followed by who is saying it. Now, we need direct quotes, which is directly quoting other people's opinions. This direct quote method can let the reader directly see the person who is speaking. This will make your writing more vivid. For example, here are some examples. Let's look at a couple of sentences. Let's look at a couple of sentences using dialogue, and then we'll talk about how they are constructed. The first is, "I don't know what to do," he said. The next, "Why aren't you hungry?" she asked. And finally, "What a wonderful view," he said. We can see open and closed quotations around the exact words, and often end with a comma. If the quote is a question or an exclamation, then those marks will will replace the comma. Inside the quotation marks. 刚才呢，那三个句子就是我们说的直接引述的话。那我们可以看到，这个文字的周围有一个开放的和关闭的这个引号。我们说它叫 quotation marks， 就是我们说的上引号跟下引号。我们中文上习惯说它是上引号、下引号，在英文我们叫 quotation marks。那通常呢，里面呢会有一些句子，就是你要想要讲的话。讲完的时候，通常我们是要用一个逗号来结束。这个你一定觉得很奇怪，为什么不用句号呢？哎，所以要特别记得，它是用一个逗号来结束。那有时候会有例外，不是用逗号。比如说什么时候呢？假如你要引述的话是一个疑问句的话，那你就用问号。那如果是一个感叹句的话呢，你就用一个惊叹号。那接着呢，在结束一句话里面可以用 said 这样的字说。Proper dialogue in longer narratives. Requires quotations to be put into new paragraphs, but a few quotes in a narrative can be left in the same paragraph. They are often followed by said, he said, she said, or using their names like Sam said. 好，在比较长的这个叙述文中啊，那我们这个引述的话
，就通常啊就可以放在文章中就好了。可是如果引述的字是比较多的时候，或是比较长的文章的时候，就要用一个新的段落来写这个引述的这个。quotation 里面的这些字哦，就要用新的一个段落来写，不要在文章里面一直写下去这样子。Finally, let's review the difference between simple past and past progressive. In the previous semester, you practiced using these tenses. Here, we will use them in the same sentence. The simple past and the past progressive can be combined to flesh out what is happening. 那最后呢，让我们回顾一下简单过去式。和过去进行式之间的区别，在上学期中呢，你们练习的使用这些的时态。那在这里呢，我们将同一个句子中使用他们这两个，一个是简单式，一个是进行式，把这两个结合在一起。Remember, past progressive shows the reader what continuous action is taking place when the main action occurs. For example, 请记住啊，这个过去进行式啊。会向读者啊显示出主要动作发生的时候正在进行的这个连续的动作，听起来有点复杂，对不对？我们直接来看一下例子。I was reading a book at home. 这句话是我在家读书。The phone rang. 然后这句话呢是电话响了。The sentences can be combined together into one sentence, reading, "I was reading a book at home when the phone rang." 好，这里呢，我们就是把这两个句子呢合成一个句子。那在这两个句子合成句子的时候呢，正在进行的动作是 was reading a book， 这是正在进行的动作。那它的主要动作是 phone rang， 这个是电话铃响，是它的主要动作。Combining these sentences gives the story more flow. With each period, the story or idea is stopped, but by combining the two sentences, you create a continuous action or idea. The simple is often accompanied by when, and past progressive often has while or as. 一句话呢，通常最后会有一个句点。那这样这个句子呢，好像就中断了这个故事，就会变中断。那我们要怎么办呢？我们就把两句话结合成一个句子。那这样这个想法就会比较流畅。那我们用什么字来结合两个句子呢？比如说，我们可以用 when 后面加上简单式。那我们也可以用 while 或是用 as。后面呢，可以加上过去进行式或是现在进行式。那总而言之呢，这意思都是当什么时候，可是后面接的时态是不一样的。Let's try an example. I woke up this morning. It was raining heavily. Laura, 让我们来看看这个例子。今天早上我醒了，下着大雨。Laura， 你帮我们把它合成一个句子。Okay, so I can say when I woke up this morning, it was raining heavily. 有时我可以说。今天早上醒来时正在下大雨。Very good, Tiffany. For you, how about I was walking to work, I saw two cars collide. 好，那 Tiffany 你的练习是这样的，我正在走路上班，那我看到两辆车子相撞。Okay, so I can say as I was walking to work, I saw two cars collide. 当我在走路上班的时候，我看到两辆汽车相撞。Very good. Do one more. She couldn't come to the party. She was working. Laura, can you try this one? 好，再试一个哦。就是说，她无法参加聚会，她正在工作。Laura， 你试试看。Okay. Um, she couldn't come to the party because she was working. 她在工作，因此无法参加聚会。Correct. 好，讲的非常好。那下一章呢？我们要教同学如何去写角色和场景。感谢大家收看这一集的节目，欢迎大家下个礼拜继续收看下一集。